Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Downey and today we're going to be discussing the strongest psalm, or what is reported to be the strongest psalm, and that is S23. So, uh, there's not a lot of research, if at all any, on this um, psalm, but I just wanted to go through it because I think the communi community could benefit from a bit of science-based evidence or information around it. So let's get into it. Um, so it's obviously, uh, in the title it says that it's one of the strongest psalms, and that's because a lot of people compare it to Tren or Winstrol in terms of its ability or its look that it gives. And so I'm just going to quickly go over a bit of its background information, and then it, it, we'll move on to a study. In, uh, which was done in mice. There are no human studies, unfortunately. So, um, uh, so yeah, let's get into it. So, it was originally derived from a previous psalm known as C6. Uh, you may have come across it in your research if you've ever researched S23 or other psalms. So, yeah, uh, so C6 um, was one of the first psalms to demonstrate uh, massive inhibitory function um, to the to sperm production because uh, a lot of psalms were looked at not only for their benefits for selectiveness but also for um, contraception and C6 proved proved to be the most favorable. However, there were issues in that it had a nitro group on the A ring, so there are two different rings, an A and B ring, and there this had major metabolites so and it altered its pharmacokinetic function, which made it a bit more unreliable as a, an agent. So what they did was they replete, uh, replaced this nitro group with a cyano group, and th this created S23. And so once they created S23, they wanted to see how it compared to C6. And usually with the addition of a cyano group, you get a lot less AR binding affinity, but more reliable more reliable pharmacokinetics. But um, which is what they wanted to achieve, because they wanted a drug that was similar to C6 in that it could cause the suppression but was a bit more reliable in terms of its pharmacokinetics. Um, so we'll go through this first study, and in the first study they looked at S23, oh, this is the only study, sorry. So they looked at it as a potential male contraceptive agent. So in the study they did in vitro and in vivo uh, testing, so test tube chest testing and in uh, rats. So in the in vitro testing they were kind of looking to see if it did lose this um, AR or androgen receptor binding affinity due to its alteration from C6. Um, and in the in vivo testing, they um, they just wanted to see if it could suppress uh, LH, FSH, as well as sperm production. Um, so in the in vivo study, so the one in rats, they used castrated as well as uh, non-castrated rats. And they um, injected uh, S23 at varying doses. They used a bunch of different doses, which you'll see now, subcutaneously uh, for around two weeks. This is a bit different to how it would be used in a human because subcutaneous administration is more or less 100% bioavailability. And we don't know how bioavailable S23 is yet, but we will find out in the study, because C6 was only about 70% bioavailable. But anyway, so from the results, in the in vitro results, when they were just looking at how it acted as a new agent, they found that it actually had a two times greater binding affinity to the androgen receptor. Um, which is a bit of a surprise, and this was the androgen receptor myocytes. Um, and the transcriptional activity, so whether it's stimulated like transcription and eventually protein synthesis, was less than C6, but it was insignificant statistically, so it didn't have much of a difference in that regard. Um, in terms of its pharmacokinetics, this um, 
uh, its half-life is 11.9 hours, which would mean that if you were to dose it, it would have to be done twice, uh, so you need to do it twice daily. And the maximal concentrations reached its peak. It was a very slow rise. In about 6 to 10 hours, it's reached its peak, plateaued, and then fell from there. So it's not like other steroids that we know of. Uh, which peak in like an hour or so, like Anavar or Debol. So its bioavailability was 96%, which is, means it was mostly absorbed when taken orally, um, and obviously this is much better than uh, C6 bioavailability. So, um, so the you can compare these studies, although they're subcutaneous injections, the bioavailability orally is almost 100%, so it's more or less can be applied to us humans. So let's look at the effect on the rats. So in the first graph we have here, as you can see, um, this was in the castrated rats. And at the bottom, you can see the varying dosages. Uh, those are uh, uh, milligrams, and uh, it looked at the um, each of these uh, organs, different organs of prostate, the seminal vesicles, the vita any muscle. So the reason they looked at the prostate was because they wanted to see if it had the selectivity that it was thought to have the seminal vesicles, because uh, it would mean that it would suppress, um, suppress, uh, it, because seminal vesicles are reproductive organs important for sperm health, they make, uh, they um, help make up part of the semen, and if those are decreased in size, it means you're more likely to be infertile. Sorry for that long-winded explanation. And then they looked at the levita ani muscle, which is a pelvic floor muscle, just because it's what they commonly use in rat models to see if certain drugs are anabolic. So as you can see, the dotted line in this means 100%, which means if the result is at this 100, this is comparing it to a rat that wasn't castrated that didn't have S23, so what it would normally be. And if it's below that line, it, mean it's, it means it decreased in size. If it's above that line, it means it increased in size for what normally would happen. So as we can see from these results, anything above 0 0.5 milligrams a day would become a lot less selective. So meaning it's not a SARM, or doesn't act as a SARM anymore, because as you can see the prostate increased above 0.5 and so um, that would indicate that it's not as selective. And that would mean any dose above 0.5 milligrams a day, and these were in 200 gram rats. So we have to try convert that to apply it to a human, which, so you would divide that by 0 0.2, because that's how uh, 200 grams is in kilograms. Um, and then you'd further divide that by six as a human rat conversion factor. And this would give you essentially 0 0.42 milligrams per kg uh, a day for a human. So anything above 42 milligrams per kg per day would result in it not being as selective as indicated by the prostate size. And so in a 100 kg individuals, this is 42 milligrams a day, which for any for our seasoned individuals who know about S23, this is a lot. Um, but yeah. So again, uh, anything above 0 .0, uh, 0 0.1 milligrams a day in a rat, which would equate to about 8.3 or 0 0.0833 milligrams per kg per day in humans, or 8.33 in milligrams in a 100 kg individual, anything above that meant it became more than therapeutic replacement, as indicated by the increase in the muscle size, as we can see here, because the 0 0.5 was actually quite anabolic, whilst uh, 0 
One, uh, as you can see, uh, there, it didn't reach a value of significance, so it wasn't decreased. It was the Levita Ani was event, uh, essentially the same, meaning it wasn't anabolic, yet it had this reduction in the prostate. So if you were looking at therapeutic replacement, that would be the dose to go to because it's not anabolic. Um, and then let's look at the second uh, table. This is essentially the oh, graph. This is essentially the same as the other, except this was the one done in rats with intact or who weren't castrated. And essentially, um, if we look here, um, uh, every dose seems to be anabolic since there's a slight increase above baseline, but only the ones with the star or asterisk above them. I can't tell because it's so blurry, uh, means it reached uh, statistical significance, which means it was, in a clinical setting, it would have a difference um, statistically. So you just have to look for that when uh, analyzing studies. So in this case, um, 0 0.3 seemed to be the best for therapeutic replacement because it was the only it caused the the biggest decrease in prostate and biggest decrease in seminal vesicles which meant it was the most suppressive which is what they were looking for in terms of contraception and it was the um what and it was also very selective but again if you go above this dose it seems to become a bit less selective and however uh um so at 0 0.3, this would equate to about 25 milligrams of uh, S23 a day in a 100 kg individual, which would mimic therapeutic replacement with not much anabolism. So in this study, I would hazard a guess, I mean in these results in the intact males, I'd hazard, hazard a guess that 0 0.5 causes, because I didn't look at it in intact um, uh, rats, that 0 0.5 would cause anabolism with tissue selectivity because 0 0.75, whilst it did cause anabolism, was not uh, as selective. But 0 0.75 could be selective, but this equates to about 62.5 milligrams um, for a 100 kg individual, and both of these are incredibly high levels. So uh, it just I, I, I'm just curious to know how individuals, they must have tested it on themselves like actual humans because we have recommendations on forums and I just wonder where they got that from because if they chose this study they'd be using much higher doses which would result in much more side effects and it already seems it's quite a potent drug. But anyway, so for therapeutic replacement you're looking at anywhere between 8 to 25 milligrams a day in a 100 kg individual, but again, this does recommendation does seem quite high, but this is based off science, um, whereas usually the forum bases things off anecdotal, anecdotal evidence because there aren't any human studies. So let's look at whether or not it's good at contraception and the hormones. So in this uh, part of the study, they had to give the S23 um, uh, rats estradiol or estrogen because they found that if they didn't, these rats would have no sexual behavior and not, would not want to mate because they were also looking to see if they could impregnate their female, <laughs> female rats. But for those who might know estradiol itself is quite suppressive and um, however they did use a control to see if estradiol was suppressive and it seemed that estradiol wasn't that suppressive but the addition of S23 made it even more suppressive. So if we look at the results here at the varying doses it does seem to be dose dependent so LH and FSH decrease in a dose dependent manner. And anything above uh, 0 0.3 seems to be the most suppressive. And then if we look at the sperm count, it's interesting to note that as they got down to um, 0 0.1 seemed to decrease the sperm count the most, and then it started increasing from there, which was just is interesting to note. 
And then they weighed the testicles at the end, and obviously they weighed less in all animals regardless of the dose. They also looked at fat mass and fat-free mass, and as you can see here, there's a dose-dependent response to that. Decrease in fat mass with an increase of fat-free mass as you got higher with the doses, and the ones with the stars mean it was significant. There wasn't a change in bone uh, mineral density, however, even though this is claimed by a few who use SARMs, um, because in other SARMs this has been demonstrated. Um, but yeah, so let's see if the changes were reversible. The seminal vesicles and testicles did return to normal quite soon after uh, halting the drug. Muscle mass was actually kept and prostate size decreased and remained low in size. Uh, which was interesting, and sperm and hormones fully recovered at 100 days, um, which is actually quite a while if you think about it, so it is very suppressive. Again, just to reiterate, there are no human trials on S23, so I would not use it, I would not recommend any SARM or steroid, but I'd especially not recommend this one. So again, um, let's just look at side effects and things that are reported from forums because there isn't much from this study that we can take. So it's most, it's usually ran between five milligrams to 20 milligrams daily, and um, it is known to cause aggression as well as uh, night sweats. It's also been reported in some instances to be hepatotoxic, um, just like other signs. And it decreases water retention, possibly due to its effect on estrogen, and that possibly is from uh, it results in decreased water retention and you looking leaner. But as we can see from the study, there is a dose-dependent increase in fat-free mass and loss of fat mass. Um, so should you do an S23 only? No, definitely not. It was even a bad idea in rats. Uh, it's contraceptive, extremely suppressive, and the rats required exogenous estrogen to maintain sexual function. But that was based on research done in rats where if they had suppression, estrogen would maintain their sexual function. In humans, it's a bit different. Estrogen is necessary, but it's not sufficient. So you need a mix of androgens and estrogens for it to be normal. So ideally, you need both. Um, if, to replace both if you wanted to feel normal on an S23 cycle, and that could be through the use of a testosterone base, or there are reports of serum SARM combinations and things like that. But it has interesting implications, and that's because male with benign prostatic hypertrophy or just enlarged prostates could use this to reduce their prostate mass if they're on therapeutic testosterone, because this could replace it whilst being more selective and decrease the size of the prostate with a dose of anywhere from 0.08 um, milligrams per kg to 0.25, but this does seem quite high. Um, so in summary, it's a potent contraceptive with the dose-dependent response, and it's the most suppressive SOM. So is it the strongest? Well, I don't know what strongest entails, but if it's an you want to know if it's the most anabolic, there's not enough research to know. But it is the most suppressive. It's also a, pr a prostate sparing up to an effect, up to a certain dose, and it reduces fat mass while uh, increasing fat-free mass. Um, but there are no human trials, so uh, it's limited and recommendations are limited on that. Um, and an S23 only cycle is quite ridiculous because it results in potent inhibition of the normal testicular axis, pituitary testicular axis. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed the video, if not, and I'll see you in the next video.